Um, and I have a little tradition that I've been doing lately, which I hope you'll indulge me on. I have a spherical camera here, and I want to get a shot of all of you with me up here. Okay? All right, ready? Wave. One, two, three. Thank you. All right, I'm super excited to be here. The buzz about the drone industry from here, from everyone here at Interdrone has been incredible. And we're very excited about what that means for the industry. And I want to talk to you a little bit today about the evolution of aerial cameras. DJI put a camera in the sky, enabling creators to capture something that was previously very difficult to do. Now our first aerial camera, this is the Phantom 2 Vision, was released at the end of uh, 2013, and it featured for the first time an integrated camera that could capture 14 megapixel stills and 1080p video. Now this was very quickly followed by the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, which was the first to feature an integrated gimbal stabilized camera. Now the Phantom 3 Professional is our current flagship consumer aerial imaging platform for consumers. Now, it's an integrated solution, it features excellent image quality and it captures 12 megapixel stills and 4K digital video. Now, it's sort of the, it's the perfect intersection of power and convenience and it's also able to capture great looking images and video from a very small form factor. Earlier this week, we released intelligent flight modes. Uh, these are flight modes for our aerial imaging platforms and they're an aerial toolkit that makes it easier to capture compelling footage without having to manually pilot. So these would be things like point of interest, which is also called orbit, so you can uh, fly around a subject while facing in, uh, waypoints. Um, we make you fly the waypoints first uh, so you don't autonomously fly into something. Um, intelligent orientation control, uh, these would be like home lock and course lock, uh, modes that sort of abstract the direction the drone is facing. And of course, follow me, uh, very highly requested by folks out there. Um, so these intelligent flight modes are really there to improve the user experience for repeatable high quality movements. Now on the higher end, DJI's integrated aerial platform is the Inspire One. And it has a transforming shape, which means that the camera has a full 360 degrees of freedom underneath the drone. And it supports dual operator mode, so you can have a dedicated camera operator as well as a pilot. Um, and it also features, of course, integrated long distance high definition video, which you just saw used in Romeo's presentation for a live broadcast uh, from remote Vietnam. So this is a ready to fly package for prosumers and professionals who are looking to do more professional video capture. And again, it's a very powerful integrated solution. Now the camera on the Inspire One is interchangeable. It's the Zenmuse X3. Now that is also gimbal stabilized, obviously, and it features a one over 2.3 inch sensor. That's the same size sensor that's used in the Phantom 3, and it has the same camera specs. The lens is 94 degrees, it's distortion free, it's like a 20 millimeter lens uh, for those of you who use full frame, full frame cameras. Now in terms of commercial use, uh, the platforms that we've produced have been so useful that they were, were found in about 70% of the first 700 FAA Section 333 exemptions. So we, what we've heard is that it's because the drones are readily available, they're reliable, and they produce consistent results. So it really takes the guessing out of aerial imaging. So these are tried and trusted products that people can, you know, basically overnight from Amazon. Um, but really, you don't need to look at the products themselves. You should really look at the final output from, from of our users. Now, for some people, of course, you might need more than what a Phantom or Inspire One offer. And at the moment, it pretty much requires building something custom. So if you need to carry a larger camera, like a GH4 or you know, Canon 5D Mark III or something, it, it really requires that you build or have built for you a custom hexacopter or octocopter, a heavier lift vehicle. And you know these things, unfortunately, don't give us the things that we sort of take for granted now, like intelligent batteries, um, pre-configured radios that have dedicated controls for cameras, uh, remote control of camera settings, you know, even something as simple as changing shutter speed on the fly, um, integrated long range, high definition video transmission, ease of deployment, sort of the list goes on. So deploying and operating a setup like this can be fairly complicated, and you know, we are very frequently used on film sets, and you can imagine on a film set, any of you who's, 
who have been on one with one of these, um, you, there's a lot of setup. You know, somebody, an assistant has to go pick the rig up, check all the camera settings, check to make sure it's in focus, and then once you get it in the air, you're sort of hoping that you haven't accidentally changed any settings. And of course, during, during this whole time, I mean, you better nail it because the director's looking at you as well as everybody else on set. So DJI is actively developing in this space. And for the folks who require custom setups, um, there it will be a product, well, we're gonna announce, pre-announce right now, Lightbridge 2, and there will be more information about Lightbridge 2 at IBC. So you don't get everything here at Intergrown. Uh, you don't get Lightbridge too. But their specs will be out very soon, and it's our high-definition, long-range uh, wireless communications protocol. Now, one thing that was really interesting that many of you noticed is that in February, we joined the Micro Four Thirds Consortium. So the Micro Four Thirds Consortium is a standard, standards group that emphasizes compact size, high-quality imaging, and interchangeable lens-type cameras. So the question is, why did DJI join the Micro Four Thirds Consortium? Well, you get larger sensors. Micro Four Thirds sensors are definitely, definitely larger, which means better image quality per pixel. So 16 megapixels on one, 16 megapixels on a smaller sensor actually makes a very, very large difference. So this is sort of busting the megapixel myth. And I'm trying to go forward here. There we go. Um, now, of course, there's lower noise because the sensors are much larger. Also, because the sensors are larger, you get bigger apertures. And so you've seen these beautiful shots with sh a shallow depth of field. This is very important for the creative use or creative capture in imaging. And of course, it's mirrorless, which means that there are no unnecessary optics. You don't have a mirror, a viewfinder, these sorts of things, um, which gives it an emphasis on compact design. So this is a Micro Four Thirds mount without an attached lens. Uh, mirrorless systems like th that are in the Micro Four Thirds standard feature a very shallow rear flange length. And what that means is lenses can have their rearmost element very, very close to the sensor. So it's possible to have small, high quality lenses for relatively large sensors. You can imagine this would be important for aerial use. So in the next evolution of aerial imaging, what we're announcing is the Zenmuse X5. Thank you. Now, the Zenmuse X5 is the world's first stabilized micro four thirds aerial camera. Now, it's three axis stabilized using the Zenmuse gimbal technology. It features a micro four thirds sized sensor that captures still images at 16 megapixels to JPEG or Adobe DNG RAW, and 4K video at 24 and 30 frames per second. Of course, the Zenmuse X5 is designed to be mounted on that interchangeable lens mount on the Inspire 1, making it the first ready-to-fly aerial camera with a micro four-thirds sensor. So being able to mount a Micro Four Thirds camera on an Inspire One is only possible because we removed all of the unnecessary elements in the camera. So this is the same thing that we've been doing since the Vision Plus, which is removing things that are used for the ground, like a grip, a viewfinder, controls. I mean, those of you who have used a land-based Micro Four Thirds sensor with a lens attached have seen how heavy they can be. And in fact, the ones that are commonly used in the air require large gimbals and heavier lift platforms. So this, the Zenmuse X5 weighs 1.16 pounds, now that's with a lens and a lens hood, and is about five and a half inches square. So again, let's take a moment to just look at what makes Micro Four Thirds sensors so exciting. It's really all about size. Now the Phantoms and the Zenmuse X3 that were on the Inspire One use one over 2.3 inch sensors, and this is a very standard sensor size for action cameras and smaller compact cameras. Now, if you look at this, I, I hope you can read it here, but you can see that the, the, large, the biggest blue um, area is the size of a Micro Four Thirds sensor, which is over eight times larger than the sensors that are in some of the smaller compact cameras, including the DJI Phantom. Now, what that means is we have very big pixels, and big pixels are important because 
there's more surface area to collect photons, and it's all about collecting photons. And if you have more surface area to collect photons, that generally means that you get higher dynamic range. This camera is capable of capturing 12.8 stops of dynamic range, which is very competitive. And also, larger sensors capture both stills and video with very little noise. Now, of course, we need lenses for Micro Four Thirds systems. And accompanying the X5 is DJI's Micro Four Thirds F1.7 aspherical lens. Now, this has a 72 degree field of view, so it's a, like a 30 millimeter lens uh, equivalent. And it features very sharp aspherical lens elements, and it's lightweight, weighing about a quarter of a pound. And the Zemuse X5 supports additional lenses. These are the, the current lenses that it will support. Now the, it supports the Olympus uh, 12 millimeter f2.0 lens, the Panasonic 15 millimeter f1.7 lens, and the Olympus 17 millimeter f1.8 lens. Now, we will have additional lens support in the future. It, of course, has to fit in the gimbal. Um, the other thing that's very important for those of you who use gimbals is that gimbals with cameras need to be balanced. So the way that we are solving this is, is by selling accessory hoods for these lenses that, when attached, center the, you know, place the center of gravity in a way such that the gimbal remains balanced. So that creates a properly balanced payload for the X5. Oh, you didn't get to see them. OK, there. Take your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, so let's talk about Zenmuse gimbal technology very briefly. Now, of course, it's a Zenmuse gimbal, so it incorporates DJI's class-leading camera stabilization technology. So here are the specs. The controllable range is negative 90 degrees in pitch, which is straight down, to plus 30 degrees, which is a little bit up. Can someone tell me where I'm supposed to point this? <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, plus and minus 320 degrees. That's almost a full circle in each direction. Now, the max controllable speed is 120 degrees a second in pitch and 180 degrees a second in pan. That means it can turn a full 360 degrees in three seconds. Now, what's uh, Pretty exciting is that the accuracy is 0.02 degrees during stabilization. Now, that just sounds like a number I'm throwing out, but the reason it's important is that's sub pixel stabilization. So, as the Zenmuse is stabilizing, the amount of motion that you're getting during that stabilization is less than one pixel's worth on the resulting image. And this practically means that you should not see stabilization artifacts in your resulting uh, video. Now, we have an advanced imaging processor in the Zenmuse X5. On the photography side, we've already talked about this some, but we have 16 megapixel still capture in JPEG and Adobe DNG RAW. Uh, our ISO range is 100 to 25,600. We burst at up to seven frames per second. And we have advanced noise reduction because of that, that large sensor and the processor. And we have some special shooting modes. We have auto exposure bracketing, HDR, panorama modes, and time lapse modes. So you're starting to see this sort of feel like a camera. You know, the normal cameras that you use on, on the ground typically have all these modes. Like on the video side, we shoot at 4K at 30 and 24 frames per second. We are broadcast ready. We're shooting using H.264 compression. Uh, and a main profile of level 4.1. And we have advanced 3D denoising for about two stops of lower light shooting. Now, 3D denoising is interesting because if you imagine standard noise reduction on a still frame, all you have are the, the pixels in that frame from which to calculate how you want to reduce the noise. But in 3D denoising, you are also able to look at history. So you can look at previous frames and analyze those in conjunction with your current frame to reduce noise. So when combined with the mechanical stabilization that we have in our gimbals, you can do some really interesting work in low light. 
so what this all means is that the X5 is a pretty compelling professional grade camera. The photos look great, and that, that clean micro four thirds sensor enables you to capture shots that are difficult to reproduce like this one, you know, shooting straight into the sun at sunset. We have advanced capture modes like bursts of seven frames per second, other things that I've mentioned that allow you to nail the shot really to tell a story. And really, of course, what we're trying to do here is create tools that allow you to tell stories. Now, I mentioned there's a panorama mode in the Zenmuse X5. In this mode, the gimbal automatically moves the camera to take multiple pictures so that the optimal overlap percentage is present in, in a, a series of pictures to allow you to stitch your gimbals in post. And of course, as with all Inspire One based aerial imagery, long distance flights are easy because LightBridge is integrated. So you have long range, reliable wireless connectivity and HD previous uh, live view. Now I've been talking a lot about cameras, but really we, what we need to remember is that the Zenmuse X5 is an aerial camera and it's integrated with the Inspire One. So this system is really designed you to let you seamlessly position a micro four thirds camera in space arbitrarily. And of course the camera is only as good as the stories you are going to tell with it. And so what we have here is really the unlocking of a third dimension for large sensors so that you can tell your, your, your stories from a new perspective. Now on the wireless control side, the Zenmuse X5 is controlled in the same way that other DJI cameras are controlled. So this would be using ergonomic physical controls on the remote controller and also using our best in class app uh, for iOS and Android, which is DJI Go. So using DJI Go, users have full control of both flight and camera settings. So all aspects of video and still capture can be controlled from DJI Go. This includes shutter speed, ISO, capture modes like burst mode, you know, uh, auto exposure, bracketing, things like that. Um, and also new for the Zenmuse X5, you can also control aperture and focus. So suddenly you have full control over a camera, uh, including things like aperture, which we didn't have before, and of course focus. And speaking of focus, I want to talk about the aerial autofocus system. So because this system now can focus, it, it is the world's first aerial autofocus system. It uses high-speed contrast-based autofocus. We have a 256 zone touchable AF. So to focus while you're using DJI Go, you just tap on the screen and it will focus there. There are also autofocus and manual modes uh, that you can use to assist uh, focus. Of course, one is fully manual focus. You can use one of the controls or the interface on the screen to slide focus around. Um, we also have focus assist mode. This is a automatic zooming when you manually focus. And we have focus peaking. Now those of you who are shoot video in the high end will be used to focus peaking. It's a way for us to tell you what's in focus based on overlays other than you, you know, rather than you having to just try to find, see what's sharp. And we previewed this uh, a while ago, but we're also announcing today DJI Focus. Now this is a wireless follow focus system. Now this is a versatile wireless follow focus system that can be used with any, you know, any motors you want, but it can also be plugged in to the Inspire One remote. So what that means is we're providing camera lens functionality for wireless focus using a physical controller that can be plugged into the Inspire remote. So you, know, you can now have a pilot, a dedicated camera operator, and in fact, if you wanted, you could have a dedicated person pulling focus while plugged into one of the other radios. Now, the wireless signal isn't uh, standalone when used with the Inspire. So we're using the Inspire One's uh, light bridge signal, which means that you can do follow focus as far as 1.2 miles or further, uh, which is our rated range. DJI Focus is, uh, is going to be available as an add-on to the Inspire One package. It'll be uh, 899 Now, the Zenmuse X5 shoots high quality 4K video. If we want to look at some of these video frames, you can see that they look different than most of the, the aerial videos that we've been seeing uh, posted to YouTube. Specifically, you can see that the background is blurry. Now, this is because we have a large land, uh, you know, larger sensor and big apertures. And uh, so the image quality is better and the ch there's a very shallow depth of field that's possible. Now, of course, aerial imaging platforms are really designed to move 
in this tracking shot of a rally car, the second operator is controlling the camera. But you can imagine that focus could also be pulled by a third operator using that DJI focus unit. Okay, so here's a summary of the specs. We're using a micro four-thirds sensor in the Zenmuse X5. It shoots at 16 megapixels for stills in JPEG and DNG. And it shoots in 4K video at 30 and 24 frames per second uh, with video bit, bit rates of 60 uh, megabits per second. So the Zenmuse X5 is the first integrated aerial imaging system that features a micro four-thirds sensor and interchangeable lenses and full remote camera and lens control. Now the Inspire One has always been a fantastic tool on sets because of its small size, ease of deployment, and dual operator support. But Cinematographers often have steeper requirements for image quality, especially if they're trying to integrate aerial footage into uh, productions that use something like a RED or higher end cinema cameras. So we have another announcement that will make the Inspire One even more appropriate for high end professional filmmaking. And that is the Zenmuse X5R. Like its sibling, the X5R uses a micro four-thirds sensor and lenses, but the R stands for something very special. Can anyone, anyone guess? It stands for RAW. So the Zenmuse X5R is the world's smallest 4K lossless cinematic camera. So it shoots 4K video to the open file format that's used for digital cinema files, which is called Cinema DNG. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Cinema DNG, it's a video format that records each frame in its own individual raw DNG file. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you can capture the highest, qual highest quality possible by storing everything coming off of the sensor in raw format. So all digital cameras shoot in raw, but most digital cameras will do an in-camera conversion to a format like JPEG, which, which we see as a picture. So what we're doing here is recording all of the data in RAW, which can lead, of course, to more complex workflows. But what you get in return is a tremendous amount of power and image quality. You're getting lossless video. It's like shooting a 4K image 30 times a second to RAW. Actually, that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> And, and of course, those of you who are still photographers know the benefits of shooting in RAW. You can do white balancing in, in the post. There's tremendous latitude for doing uh, color grading. And what we're doing is giving you the ability to retain that information during capture. So the, Zen the Zenmuse X5R actually records two video streams at the same time. It records RAW lossless cinema DNG, and it records this to a proprietary 512 gigabyte mini solid state disk. It also records a proxy QuickTime movie using H.264 compression to the micro SD card. So raw video is captured at an incredible bit rate. Remember, we were capturing about 60 megabits a second to micro SD card. Well, at raw, we're capturing up to 2.4 gigabits per second. So this is more than 300 megabytes per second of, of raw footage. Um, now, the proxy videos are very useful because in raw workflows, it can be challenging to work with Cinema DNG. So the idea is that we're recording a proxy video, which is the same quality as you would get if you were shooting the Zenmuse X5, and you can basically start editing immediately using those files. Okay, so as I mentioned before, raw workflows can be quite complicated. So DJI's new CineLite application is can be used to apply our color lookup table to captured raw video sequences. You can also do color grading using CineLite. And what CineLite does will then export back to Cinema DNG or also to Apple ProRes or TIFF sequences. And of course, I talked about proxy sequences which are captured. Um, so the idea is you can go through this workflow while you're editing the proxies. So in order to take advantage of the X5R's fantastic sensor and raw recording capabilities, we have uh, created a new logarithmic color space called D-Log. 
which is what the X5R records to in, in raw video. So the D-Log color space gives filmmakers the most flexibility in color grading in post. So the video captured in D-Log, as in all log modes for video, is low contrast and desaturated out of the camera. But with a bit of grading, videos can easily take on whatever look you're going for in your production. So you have an Audi here driving, driving along a bridge, and you can suddenly make it cruise in the warmth of like a hazy late afternoon or something like that. Now, capturing raw video in D-Log gives professional editors what they need to fulfill their creative desires. So if we look at the specs for the Zenmuse X5R, we're shooting in lossless Cinnamon DNG at 4K at 30 and 24 FPS. Bit rates average 1.7 gigabits per second and peak at 2.4 gigabits per second. We're capturing those dual video streams, Cinnamon DNG and a QuickTime Movie Proxy. And we're recording to an integrated removable 512 gigabyte mini SSD. The Zenmuse X5 and the X5R will be supported also by DJI's SDK. Now, this is our software development kit. Now, this will give developers control of the X5 and the X5R and access to the media that it captures. So third-party developers will be able to access the most powerful integrated aerial imaging platform on the market and write custom software, custom apps against it. OK, enough talking. I want to show sample video. Now, this sample video was captured both using the X5 and the X5R. And we have audio? I don't know what audio that is. There we go. Can we mute the iPod? Thank you. At the Q&A session at 7 o'clock today, we will have a couple of the units on hand so you can see them and touch them if you'd like. Um, they'll also be available at our booth uh, tomorrow, which is booth number 500, and uh, so you can come check them out as they're mounted on, uh, on Inspire Ones. So thanks so much for your time. <laughs>